This lecture is over Chapter 3, Functions, from the Think Python textbook. A function in Python is a name sequence of statements that perform a computation. When you define a function, you specify the name and the sequence of statements that will be executed. Later, you can then call the function by name. We've already seen a function call, the type function that we used earlier. When we run this, it tells us that the argument 42 is an integer type. So it's the name of the function is type. The expression in parentheses is called the argument of the function. The result for this function is the type of argument. It's common to say that a function takes an argument and returns a result. The result is also called the return value. Here are some other examples. If we run on the argument 32, it's a string, and we want to convert it to an integer, we get 32 return. We try the same thing with hello as a string, trying to convert it to an integer. And that gives us an error message because it is an invalid request. You cannot turn a text string such as hello into an integer. Here are some additional examples. Taking a, an integer to a float, so we have 32 is our argument and we convert it to a float. It was started out as an integer, it's now float. We can do the same thing with a string that involves numbers. We can turn that string 3.14 into a float. And then we can take an integer and turn it into a string. We also have in Python math functions. Uh, Python has an entire module that provides most of the familiar mathematical functions. And a module is a file that contains a collection of related functions. Before we can use the functions in this type of a module, we first have to import that with an import statement. So here we are. We're going to import the math function. When we run that code, it doesn't seem to do anything, but now it's available to us. So if we type math and run that code, it will tell us that the mo it's a module called math and it's built in. There are a variety of functions available in that and variables are defined in this module. To access one of the functions, you have to specify the name of the module and the name of the function. Separate those by a period. This is called the dot notation. So here, we're specifying pi within the math object, or the math module, and down here, we're specifying sin. So, because we've already imported that in an earlier statement, if we run this, it will output the result of that calculation. The expression math.pi gets the variable pi from the math module, so you don't have to type it in. You can just call that. It makes it a little bit easier. And it's a value that is a floating point approximation accurate to 15 digits. If I run that, you can see here is my output of pi. Now, almost anywhere you can put a value, you can put an arbitrary ex expression with one exception. So, you have to make sure that you're using them correctly. The left side of the assignment statement has to be a variable name. So, that's this one right here on the left side of that equal sign because this is an assignment statement assigning the variable hours times 60 to the variable minutes. Here, we put hours times 60 and assigned minutes to this expression. Well, that's wrong. You cannot put a expression on the left side. It can only be on the right side. So you would get an error message, syntax error, that it can't assign to an operator. Now, you can create new functions 
by using the function definition. That specifies the name of a new function in the sequence of statements that run when the function is called. For example, here we're creating the function print lyrics. It has no arguments because we just have empty parentheses. Parentheses. We've typed def and then we've given a name right here, print lyrics, and we follow it with a colon. Then we say that this statement, the two statements, print statements following that will, what will be what will happen if we call the print lyrics function. So I'm going to run this code. It appears nothing happens because we haven't yet called it. But if I go down here, let's see what type is print lyrics. When you define a function object, it becomes a type of function. And so you can see that here. I've run type print lyrics and it returns that it is a function. If I run or call print lyrics here, it then prints out the two statements up here that are part of the print lyrics definition function. Now once you've defined a function, you can take it and use it inside another function. So here we are creating another new function. We're defining repeat lyrics, function with no arguments, but it is going to call the print lyrics function two times. Run that, nothing appears to happen, but when I call repeat lyrics, my function I just created, it will print out my statements hello darkness my old friend, and pink fluffy unicorns twice. Now definitions and the uses of these functions. Pulling When we pull all this code together it looks like this. We have two definitions, the print lyrics and the repeat lyrics. And then you can run repeat lyrics. This program contains those two definitions you have to create a function before you can run it. In other words, if I tried to run repeat lyrics before I created it and defined it, it would give me an error message. So keep that in mind. In order to call a function earlier in your code, you have to have it defined. Some of the functions we have seen require arguments. So inside the function, the arguments are assigned to variables called parameters. Here's a definition for a function that takes an argument. Print twice, it has an, ar an argument called parameters, and it will then print parameters twice. So I'm going to run this to make that be defined, and now I'm going to use my function print twice on the string hello. And when I run this code, I get hello twice. I can use it a second time using 42 as my argument. So here I'm using an integer. Here I used a string. Here I'm going to use it with a mathematical function, math.pi. Here I'm going to use it with a string mathematics, spam, printed out 10 times twice. And here I'm going to use it on a function within a function within a function and we see that it prints that out twice as well. Remember, the argument is evaluated before the function is called. So here, math pi would be evaluated, then the math cosine of math pi, and then the print twice. Now, if I set spam, a variable, up to that string, I can then call my print twice on my spam string and I get that printed out twice. So you can see how easy and useful it is. It helps you do a lot of things and streamline your code. Now variables and parameters are local. When you create a variable inside of a function, it is local to that function, which means it only exists inside of the function. Here's an example. We're defining cat twice. Cat twice has two arguments, part one and part two. Within cat twice, we've created a variable called cat. It's adding part one and part two, so it's concatenating, and then it's printing that twice. So if I run this code, again, we see nothing happen. But 
when now I assign line 1 and line 2 to two variables. I'm going to use line 1 as my part 1 argument, line 2 as my part 2 argument. And if I run cat twice on this, I get hello darkness big fluffy unicorns printed twice. Now keep in mind, cat is no longer available to me. So if I go to a new line of code and I try to print cat, I get an error message because it's outside of, we're now outside of the cat twice where cat was defined. So it's no longer available to the system. Now why do we want to use functions? It may not seem clear to you initially why you want to use functions, but there are several good reasons. One, creating a new function gives you an opportunity to name a group of statements, which makes your program easier to read and debug. Two, functions can make a program smaller by eliminating repetitive code. And later, if you make a change, you only have to make it in one place. And then dividing a long program into functions allows you to debug the parts one at a time and then assemble them into a working whole. So well-defined functions are often useful for many programs. Once you write and debug one, you can then reuse it. Please take a close look at this chapter. If you have any questions, please contact your professor.